Hello everybody, my name is Street Company and here is Tokyo Station, the gateway of Tokyo. This video is about Tokyo itself. I will tell you about what is Tokyo, where is Tokyo, how and why Tokyo has constructed, and which kind of neighborhoods does Tokyo have. In other words, a general Tokyo guide. Yes, it's time to discover this mega city. Oh, and one more, simple subscribing gonna make this video more interesting. Yeah, let's go. Tokyo is the capital of Japan, officially known as Tokyo Prefecture. Japan has four types of prefectures as Todofuken. Tokyo-do is one to of Japan and it simply means metropolis and is very wide. It covers almost 2,200 square kilometers, is three times the size of New York, and it has a large population of 14 million people. 14 million. It makes Tokyo the most crowded prefecture in Japan surpassing the 9.1 million in neighboring Kanagawa prefecture, also Osaka too, the third largest prefecture of 9 million people. So are we going to cover it all of Tokyo today? No. Tokyo is divided into 23 special wards and other municipalities. We will focus on those 23 special wards. They are normally known as the city of Tokyo, and others like suburb or commuter town of 23 wards. As a whole prefecture, Tokyo looks so wide than other cities. But the area of the core part with 23 wards is 622 square kilometers, that is 80% of New York. Now Tokyo looks like a normal capital city. Tokyo is located on the Kanto Plain, the largest plain in Japan. But plain is not all of Tokyo. The Sheba prefecture is long from west to east. There is a Tokyo Bay on the east and mountainous area on the west. So Tokyo has mountains, oceans, and urban areas all in one. There are Sumida River and Arakawa River. But in the city of Tokyo, those natural elements are not prominent. The mountains are too far away, and the city of Tokyo has only few hills at best. And Sumida River is very tiny, even smaller than the Seine River Paris. Also, Arakawa River, which is the largest, circles the outskirts into the sea. So riverside is not a big part of Tokyo, even though there are tiny mods. Tokyo also have a harbourfront in this area, but the identity of Tokyo is not a port city like Kobe or Yokohama. So in Tokyo, there is no natural boundary between cities. Rivers and sea divide boroughs of New York, Sand and Thames River separate Paris and London. But in Tokyo, the terrain is gentle and city continues smoothly. Plains and only few hills, and you can move between two neighborhoods by your foot. Roppongi is a 20-minute walk from Tokyo Tower. Shibuya is a 30-minute walk from there. It's not hard, but Tokyo is a mega city. One sub-center in Tokyo is much bigger than the city center of another normal city. Tokyo is characterized by a large downtown of sub-centers that seamlessly connect. Do I need to know the history of Tokyo, you might ask, but it's really important part of understanding of Tokyo. You won't regret it once you see it. So let's go. Toyotomi Hideyoshi finally unifies Japan in the 16th century. He appointed Tokugawa Ieyasu, a powerful rival, as a lord of Edo. Originally, Tokugawa Ieyasu was lord of Okazaki near Nagoya, which is close to Osaka and Kyoto, the center of Japan at the time. Tokyo was an undeveloped area before Tokugawa, because at the time, the Kanto Plain, including Edo, was very salty wetland of reed baths and reeds. It was barren, uninhabitable. But Tokugawa Ieyasu didn't have power to change the order, so he moved to Edo with his clan and started settling. This is the beginning of Tokyo. But guess what? Good things kept happening to Ieyasu. He clears and develops the red beds and salty fields, then the potential of the land is unleashed. Hideyoshi unifies Japan and he was unstoppable, but he begins the Seven Years' War between Joseon, former Korea, and Ming, former China, and he fell down and died suddenly. After Hideyoshi died, Ieyasu rise and conquer Japan. The Edo shogunate of Tokugawa clan has established. From then on, Edo grew tremendously. In 17th century, it was a barren land that was just being developed. A hundred years later, in the 18th century, a million people live in Edo, 
while Osaka and Kyoto are still at 300 or 400,000. Westerners who visited Edo were amazed at the scale. The key to this prosperity is usually attributed to the samurai rotation system. Daimyo, the lord of province, were required to send their wives to Edo as vessels, and they themselves would alternate a year between their province and Edo. Ieyasu think if the local lords just stay in their territories, they might empower themselves and rebel to shogunate. So it was a tool to disempower them. You may ask why this was good for Edo's development. Because the local lords couldn't just wander around barefoot. Lords, daimyo, and samurai have pride, so they come to Edo with all their servants to live. And this happened annually. Japanese local roads were maintained very well, and trading between Edo and its prefectures was active. Also, lords had a family in Edo, but it's hard to for low-class samurai. So samurais left their wives and came alone to Edo. Edo had a huge influx of people who are not producing, who are spending money. Consuming exploded, Edo's commerce is booming, and the sex industry is a bonus. It's all over the place. What does samurai do without sex? And that's one of the reasons why the sex industry in Japan really took off. And the next period, the Meiji era of modernization. The Tokugawa clan, the rulers of the shogunate, transferred their power to Meiji Emperor, who was living in Kyoto at the time. But Meiji Emperor actually moved his residence from Kyoto to Edo, and even renamed Edo to Tokyo, which means the East Capital. Tokyo became the undisputed capital of Japan. Of course, there were many ups and downs before and after that. Old wooden buildings burned by many fires, and due to the geographical location of the Japanese archipelago, earthquakes were also frequent. The Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, for example. In addition, in the Pacific War, Japan was heavily bombed by American Air Force, and cities were burned to the ground. And in the process, almost the old buildings were destroyed. But Japan somehow managed to rebuild its economy, and Tokyo was the capital of that economic powerhouse. Its wealth reached its peak during the bubble economy of the 1980s. Real estate went up like crazy. People said if you sell the whole land of Tokyo, you could buy all of America. Tokyo's main image of numerous colorful signs is a trace of this era. But in the end, there was no free lunch. A bubble is a bubble, because it has to burst. South Korea and Taiwan start to grow, and Tokyo, Asia's most developed city, starts to look old. The policy up to that point had been a decentralized Tokyo's downtown's function to the sub-centers, why you can still feel the retro vibe in many parts of Tokyo today. Eventually, in the 90s, Tokyo felt the pinch and decided to develop the city center. The idea was to revitalize the real estate market by redeveloping buildings in a glamorous way and revive the city center to make Tokyo more competitive. So a lot of new buildings start to go up in the old center. And this became the skyline that we see in the center of Tokyo. So there are two and a half periods in Tokyo's background. Not two, not three, not four, two and a half. The first one is half. The reason why it's half is because Tokyo doesn't have old wooden buildings from the Edo period. They burned down. The only old buildings left are modern stone buildings from Meiji era, like Tokyo Station, so that's half. And next one, retro tile buildings of bubble economy, blaring cyan edge. And the last one is the newer glass covered buildings from the downtown redevelopment project, a stunning skyline. When looking at the map of Tokyo, the main point of reference is the Imperial Palace, shown in the green in the center. It was the site of the Tokugawa clan's Edo Kezo, and now used as a residence of the Japanese Emperor. The neighboring administrative district, including the Imperial Palace, is Chiyoda City, which is similar to the sum of City of Westminster and City of London. It is a place to all sorts of expensive and important things. Tokyo Station, the gateway of Tokyo, and Otemachi, Marunouchi, and Yurakucho between Tokyo Station and the Imperial Palace is a huge office district with all the big financial, bio, and media companies. 
This land is also home to some of Tokyo's best luxury hotels, Aman Tokyo, the Peninsula Tokyo, and two of famous Four Seasons. In the south, there are almost ministries in Kasumigaseki, and National Assembly and the Prime Minister's office in Nagatacho. It's amazing, isn't it? This is Chiyoda. This is the heart where moves the country of Japan. A bigger consumer city like Edo would have a big shopping district. This the old commercial district is now Nihonbashi in Chuo City, simply means center city. The predecessor of Mitsui, a conglomerate that still dominates Japan in the 21st century, Echigoya Lumber was founded here in Nihonbashi. This was the downtown of Edo Castle. Throughout its flowering years, the reputation of Japan's premier shopping district would be inherited by Lower Kinja. Now, Tokyo has a lot of luxury streets like Omotesando, Aoyama, Ropongi. But when it comes to historic high end boutiques, Kinja is the place to be. It's not just old though, it's also home to trendy shopping malls like Kinja 6. One more highlight of Chuo City is Chikiji Market. It used to be the best fish market in Tokyo, past tense. Now it's moved over to Toyosu, but there's still the seafood market for individual visitors. So it gets a lot of tourists who go for sushi and seafood bowl. Here's Edokeso. There's Nihonbashi, the shopping district. From there, the city center generally extended northward. It became a part of Chiyoda City and Taito City. So there still has a feel of an old town neighborhoods. Main neighborhoods are Ueno, Asakusa. These are collectively known as Shitamachi. It means downtown. Ueno is the gateway to northeast Tokyo. Ueno Zoo here is old enough to have been opened in the 1880s. Ameoko Shopping Street, which is attached to Ueno Station, is one of Tokyo's most famous traditional market. And Asakusa is home to a long-standing Sensoji Temple, the landmark of Tokyo. Jinbocho is Tokyo's leading antique bookstores and publishing center. Shueisha of Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece locates here. In between is Akihabara, the center of electronics and subculture. You get the idea, here is the world capital of anime and manga. Now let's go to south, on the flip side, south of Chioda and Chuo. These are the neighborhoods where daimyo and samurai used to live. Mostly, there was a long period of peace and samurai class slightly fell down. Japanese government took over failed samurai's mansions. By the way, it was difficult for new development to take place in northeastern Tokyo, which was crowded with commoners. But the south side of the city was relatively free from that. So there was a lot of real estate development. Expensive condominiums and mansions were being built. This became Minato City, a very wealthy neighborhood of Tokyo. There's Ropongi, which has a lot of American culture because there is a US military base in Minato City. There are also many embassies and multinational companies' headquarters. Ropongi, in particular, is a representative urban redevelopment area in Tokyo. Architecture like Ropongi Hills and Midtown are the sample. Of course, there are more than them in 2020s like Toranomon Hills or Ajabudai Hills. And one more, Tokyo Tower, a famous landmark, is also located in Minato City. The next areas to explore are Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Ikebukuro. You've heard of these neighborhoods before, they are super famous. But to understand these areas, you need to know a little bit about Tokyo's railroads. There is a JR Yamanote Circular Line, which goes around the center of Tokyo. Why is this important? Because it's the line that separates the outside of Tokyo from the inside. Tokyo has three types of different railway system. JR, the former national railway. Yamanote Line is a part of JR. Others are subway and private railways. And only subway can run inside of Yamanote Line. 
What this means is that if you live at the outside of Yamanote Line, you have to transfer to get in the central Tokyo at Yamanote Line to JR or subway. Naturally, this creates a huge transfer demand. Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Ikebukuro are the most biggest transfer stations of private railways, JR, and subway lines. They are the gateways from Western Tokyo. So they have a different feel from Tokyo Station, which has traditionally been part of downtown Tokyo. Third, Shibuya, the richest of the three, Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Ikebukuro. You already know about the iconic Shibuya scramble. Maybe this is the reason why you want to visit Tokyo. Of course, the crossroad is not all of Shibuya. There are endless malls and stores and restaurants in Shibuya too. Next up are Omotesando and Harajuku, north of Shibuya. Omotesando with luxury goods and upscale cafes and restaurants. And then there's Harajuku, known as for its eccentric fashion. Meiji Jingu, the most prestigious shrine of Tokyo, is next to Harajuku. Shibuya, Omotesando, and Harajuku are slightly connected to each other. Shinjuku is the overall gateway to the west. It's bigger than Shibuya. The JR Chuo Sobu line runs east to west through the Tokyo metropolitan area, and then there are private railroads to southwest, northwest, and just west. So it's the busiest area of the three major sub centers. 3.5 million passengers a day. Crazy. It's the busiest station in the Tokyo, even more than Tokyo Station. So the downtown area is unbelievably huge. Kabukicho, Tokyo's notorious entertainment district. Isetan department store, which has the highest sales in Japan. It doesn't end with just commercial district. There are also tall office buildings, include the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. That's why there are so many people. The Shinjuku city, which Shinjuku is part of, Shinokubo, the Korean style neighborhood, and Kagurajaka, the classic and elegant neighborhood. And finally, Ikebukuro, the northernmost neighborhood. This is the gateway to Saitama Prefecture in northwest of Tokyo. Relatively speaking, it has the weakest atmosphere of these three. But still, there's plenty to do there. Bunkyo City, which is probably the commonest neighborhood in the city. There's a lot of universities, including the University of Tokyo. The only large facilities are the Tokyo Dome and the amusement park Tokyo Dome City. So there are 8 cities in Yamanote Line. This is where you will spend more than 80% of your time in Tokyo. But I will simply introduce other cities too. Meguro City, south of Shibuya. There are Daikanyama, Jiugaoka, Nakameguro, connected to Shibuya. There are many pretty and sophisticated places, so girls usually put them on the course. In Zetagai city, there is a busy street for second-hand clothes called Shimoki Tajawa. Suginami city has Ogikubo, a ramen battleground. It's close to Kichijoji, which has a nice neighborhood and lots of good cafes. Kichijoji is actually in the Musashino city, not in Suginami city. Sumida city, east of Taito city, there is a Tokyo sky tree. And then there's a Koto city. Here you will find Toyosu market, where former Tsukiji seafood market and Ariake, where Komike, the coming market is held, and Odaiba, with its shopping malls and seaside park with amazing skyline of Tokyo. Also, the Statue of Gundam and Statue of Liberty, too. Odaiba is technically divided into Minato and Koto cities. Aqua cities, the Night View, the Statue of Liberty, and the Hilton belong to Minato city, and the Mall of Daiba city and its Gundam belongs to Koto city. But nobody cares about this, Odaiba is just Odaiba, but this is the truth. Finally, Edogawa city. There's really nothing to see here, but Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea is around here. These are basic informations to understand Tokyo, so let's summarize what you learned today.
Yes, this is it. Now you learn about the city of Tokyo itself. I believe that there is a huge difference between just wandering the city and to travel after you learn about the background and structure. This place where I finished this video is Asakusa and this romantic atmosphere never fades away. You must visit here. Thank you for watching this long video and thank you again.